Aha! Hello there, good morning, and welcome. It's Thursday, it's the first Thursday of the month, the 2nd of June. Delighted to be here. It's the live lesson with Keith from the Keith Speaking Academy. Today, it's an exciting lesson all about adverts or advertisements. We'll be looking at some idioms, vocabulary, um, different kinds of adverts, good and bad, and the ugly. Can't wait. Let's dive straight in with a little bit of this. Hello, my friends. It's great to see you. Thank you so much for joining me today for the live lesson. And as I mentioned, the live lesson today is all about this. It's all about advertisements or advertisements. Adver adverts, that's what we're doing today. Great. Um, very nice to see all of you. We're going to look at different things today. Just to begin, um, I would like to see to see you. Um, we've also got Village Overlam Mala from Tamil Nadu. Great, good to see you. Daphne, hello. Nisha, hi. Um, Mosen from Iran, Ishfan, oh, lovely to see you here. Great. Shocky John as well. And we got Veronica, good morning. Nice to see you. Raphael, good. Uh, Pion from Myanmar as well. Quite got quite a few from there, lovely. And from Uzbekistan, Sador, Sador, nice to see you. Lady Blue from the Philippines, lovely to see you too. Listen, welcome to today's lesson all about adverts. And before we begin, um, I'd just like to say, well, I'm going to say a big, big thank you because as I put in my Facebook group the other day, recently I got this thing over here. I don't know if you can see this ever so proud of course this is from youtube the guys at youtube thank you very very much it's one of my favorite hello that's me you can see everything it's one of my favorite youtube youtube social media channels this came for getting a million subscribers how cool is that a nice little um trophy oh, it smashes and breaks hopefully not a nice trophy from youtube thanks youtube but most of all thank you to all of you who have been following me I think for some time, some of you, somebody that the other day said they've been following me for three years. I said, have I been on YouTube for three years? I think I have just about three years. So listen, thank you so much. I do really appreciate it. It's very humbling. And it's also an amazing feeling to be able to reach so many people around the world. It was always been one of my ambitions to reach and help people around the world with, um, well, learning English. But, you know, learning language, communicating, getting to know each other, making the world a more peaceful and happy place, basically. <laughs> Big mission, Keith. I know. Oh, well. <laughs> so, listen, great. Thank you so much. Thanks for your congratulations. Um, Daphne says, you received it because you deserved it. Thank you very much, Daphne. I appreciate it. Aziza, thank you so much as well. Very, very nice. Congratulations. Lovely. Thank you so much. I can't pronounce your name, but it looks really, really nice. Congratulations also. Anita, thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Thank you, all of you. Now, the other piece of news. Oh, yes. Well, as we're discussing adverts, let me do an advert, <laughs> right? I'm allowed to do adverts, I think. Um, you may know, right, I've got an online course called um, IELTS Speaking Success, Get a Band 7 Plus Gold. There's the simple version, which is cheaper, and there's this version, which is more complex. There's more videos, there's more practice, there's live lessons, um, there's a private Facebook group, lots of stuff. The gold course, I've just added some updates. So those of you who are students on the course, when you log in next time, just look for the new in the title and you'll see the updates. And I actually, um, yeah, you'll just see it in the title there when you go in. There are new videos about the topics of watches, um, old buildings, 
um, events, part two and part three. So for the gold course, you've got updates. For the regular course as well, IELTS Speaking Success, Get a Band 7 Plus, there are updates as well. For those of you who are not sure if you want the course, now might be a good time to buy only because midnight tonight, the price is going up a little bit. Um, so if you're thinking about it, if you're in two minds, undecided, sat on the fence, now might be a good time. Say, right, I'm going to go and study, get focused with Keith on the gold course or the band seven plus course, because the prices will go up midnight tonight, Spain time. So just to let you know, Cha-cha! That's my advert. <laughs> do, 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 do. I need a jingle for my adverts. Here you go. Here's a jingle. That should be my official jingle. For the Keith Speaking Academy. Listen, if you are new here, um, I also run a website called the Keith Speaking Academy. You can go and check it out if you want to find out Anything about the IELTS speaking test, the different format, how it's evaluated, tips and tricks, lots of free material there, especially all of the live lessons that we do. All the notes, the videos are there for free. You can access them and go and study with me. Keith Speaking Academy, go and check it out. Now then, on my website, I have the speaking courses, a lot of you know I have a writing course. It's not my course. It's by a friend of mine, Eli, who has a writing course. Due to popular demand, um, I'm also collaborating with Fiona, who is a teacher I have known for a few years now, um, based in Wales. And Fiona has a website, um, IELTS ETC, and she's going to put a reading course on my website. So coming around early June, well, that's soon, right? It's next week. We're going to be launching next week. Duh. Next week, I think it's next Friday, we'll be launching Fiona's reading, IELTS reading course um, on the website. And you'll be able to buy that as well if you're interested. If you've ever been confused by true, false, not given questions, ooh, <laughs> that course is going to sort you out. And we'll be doing a live session next Wednesday, actually. We'll be doing a live session on that topic so you can find out all about it. Mosquitoes. Fiona, reading course coming next week, live session next Wednesday with me here on the YouTube channel. Excellent. Good. Let me check in and see how you're all doing. <laughs> Min says, I'm in the IELTS test the following month. Should I buy your course now? Um, if you've got a month, it's a very, it's a very, very good question. Um, if you, well, if you've got a month, you could, yes. If you want to improve your speaking level, like up a band, you'll need more than a month. You'll need probably three months or more. However, if you just need some exam strategy and some particular topics you want to improve, then yes, absolutely, this is going to help you. Students ask me, how long does the course take? It's self-access. You can study whenever you want, as long as you want. I've got students who bought it last year and they're still coming back and reviewing and improving their English with it, their spoken English, spoken natural English. Um, so, it can take, I would recommend two to three months, but it could be longer. But students have done it in four weeks. And they said four weeks was great, gave me just what I needed. So it's, it depends on the situation, really. Great. Layla, nice to see you. Website is useful for all learners. Thank you very much, Layla. Lovely to see you here as well. <laughs> Anik, very good point. Your beard has grown. Now, Anik, I woke up this morning and I thought... I'm going to go for the five o'clock shadow look. Do you know that expression? The five o'clock shadow is when you leave your beard to grow. It's a bit of stubble. And the five o'clock shadow look is kind of that natural look. So that's what I went for. Okay, 
not entirely. There's a mosquito. It's so annoying. Go away. Fly away. Um, the five o'clock shadow, it's not. It was just, I was lazy. <laughs> I just woke up and thought, oh, I can't be bothered. So as a lot of men will know here, men watching, when you see a man with a five o'clock shadow, the rough look, sometimes it's a look, but a lot of the time we're just lazy. We can't be bothered. <laughs> to be bothered, can't be bothered, means I'm lazy, right? Anik, interesting to see your comment. Um, right, yes, Saturn, you asked about the interactive course, which is the old course, now the gold course. Um, yes, I will put the updates in the interactive course as well. Yes, um, and you can all set, you can move automatically to the gold course. Um, just send me an email and I'll put you straight in the goal course because it's the same course, right? Helpful to practice my skill of English, Lala Bibi. Thank you very, very much. Yosra, nice to see you here again. I know you've been following me for quite a while. Over the moon. Thank you so much. Pool Chan, this is a good question. And maybe this will be the last question before we move on. Forgive me, but what is the difference between your YouTube resources and your course? It's a great question. There are, I say, two big differences. YouTube is lots of different videos and you can get them in any order. And there's distractions, there's advertisements, there's lots of other people with, you can flick to another channel, to another video of another person. You can get distracted really easily. That's one thing. The course is structured, step-by-step -step process to go through. Everything is laid out very, very clear. You do this, 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 and you move through the course. No distractions, no advertisements, right? The second thing I would say is the videos on YouTube don't have model answers or language analysis. The videos on YouTube are things like 15 phrasal verbs, um, 10 uh, idiomatic expressions for feelings, right? It's lots of vocabulary, some tips and tricks, but there's no real model answers or language analysis. The course is based on model answers for lots of topics and questions, and then an analysis of the language, the vocabulary, the grammar, the pronunciation, for all of that language. So in effect, with the gold course, you're taking your level of English up a whole new level. It's not just exam strategy, it's so much more. Hope that makes sense. Thank you so much for your questions. And let's let's move on because we are, if you've just joined us, we're um, today looking at the topic of adverts and I'm gonna jump straight into this. Um, and let's begin. What are we gonna begin with, Keith? Well. Let's find out what we're going to begin with. We're going to begin, first of all, with the following. With what? <laughs> uh, come on. Okay. This one. Get it open. Right. Adverts. Okay. That's it. So what I'm going to do today, I'll just talk you through this, is we'll go through um, adverts. We're going to look at vocabulary to begin with. Um, and then after vocabulary, we're going to look at different parts of an advert. What are the different parts, right? Look at this. Love is in the air, in every side and every sound. So we'll be looking at the different parts of an advert as well as, what's this? Celebrity, endorser, sponsor. Well, what makes a good advert? This is what we're going to look at today. And in addition, we'll be creating a slogan. We're going to together brainstorm and create a new slogan for the Keith Speaking Academy. Yeah, nice. We'll be looking at some idioms today. Of course, for example, to have it down to a T. Interesting idiom. Do you know this one? To have it down to a T. Well, by the end of the session, you will know this and many more idioms. And also, we'll be doing a bit of, what's that? Games. This is you trying to get the right answer. 
when we play Kahoot. So at the end of the lesson, we'll be here about an hour and a half. We'll be doing Kahoot and we'll be looking at uh, the reviewing the vocabulary. So stay awake. No falling asleep today, please. Adverts, vocabulary. Let's begin. Finally. <laughs> OK, so I'm going to begin with the vocabulary here. First of all, we can talk about an ad. So you can say an advert or advertisement. Say these with me. Ad. An ad, because it's an, right? An ad. An advert. An advertisement. Or an advertisement. Yeah, good. OK, so that word advertisement um in britain we tend to say advertisement right but you can change the stress and some people and i think this is more popular in america advertisement advertisement what accent is that keith so we talk about as a verb to advertise uk english with an s to advertise something. So if you're selling something, right, then you're advertising that thing. So I like adverts that are advertising shampoo or they're advertising computers or technology things. I like adverts that are advertising cars because I think they're good. So advertise something is when you're selling something, right? However, notice the difference. If you advertise for something, you're not selling, but you're looking for something or somebody, right? So, for example, you may see this ad, this ad is advertising for a chef, right? So this ad, they are advertising for a chef, means they are looking for a chef. They are not selling you a chef. <laughs> Here's Jamie Oliver. Oh, thank you. How much? £20. Oh, great. Go and buy Jamie Oliver. No, you can't buy the chef. This is where they are looking for a chef, right? Because advertisements also are people trying to recruit. So advertising for a chef or for a teacher, right? You'll see a lot of advertisements for English teachers because people want to employ teachers. So notice the difference, right? Advertise something is when you're selling and advertise for is when you're looking for that, right? Prepositions, so important and so much fun, right? <laughs> Right. Oh, this is quite interesting. Miko, sorry, you just caught my attention because I'm on holiday in Blackpool. Mikael, do you know, for about 10 years as a child, I spent every summer holiday in Blackpool. It's close to Manchester. We used to go there all the time. We stayed in a hotel near St Anne's, which is next to Blackpool. Um, I wonder if the lights are up at the moment in the street. They have the illuminations. But listen, thanks for joining us. <laughs> That's so interesting. OK, moving on. We can also say advertise more prepositions, right? So if you're a company, maybe you advertise in a newspaper, on the TV or on social media. So just be aware of the different prepositions. We normally use on, right? Normally, let's say usually use, interesting, usually use on for a platform. Now, not always, but as a rule of thumb, nice expression, rule of thumb means generally speaking, it's true. We usually use on if it's a platform. So on social media. I am on YouTube. Um, I'm also on Facebook. I used to be on Instagram, but I don't like Instagram so much. Sorry, Facebook, Meta, whatever your name is. Um, 
So on the TV, on social media. So that's just a little a little tip, right? When you're thinking about prepositions, often it's on, right, for a platform. Okay, great. We can also say an advert for something. So this is an advert for, well, let's, let's give you an example, right? At the beginning of this class, I showed you my creative over here, and I said, this is an advert for my course. It's an advert for my course because I'm selling something. But you can say an advert, an advert for somebody, for a teacher, if you're looking for, right? So when we say an advert, an advert for, it could be either selling or looking for. Usually the context will make it clear, right? If I say to you, oh, look, an advert for a teacher. It's probably not selling a teacher, right? It's probably looking for a teacher. Oh, an advert for a car. Probably could be selling, could be looking for. But the context will be very important. Okay. Excellent. Um, Yaid, thanks for this. Nice example. Just to, I saw an advert for a job with a large engineering company. Perfect, right? Very, very nice. Hikran, go and enjoy your lesson. Great. <laughs> Great. We've also got just a couple of examples. Sometimes advertising on the TV makes me annoyed. Annoyed because annoy is the verb, right? But here you want an adjective. It makes me angry, makes me annoyed, right? But lovely use of on. Great. Excellent. <laughs> Nishadi, I'm hopeless at advertising. I hope that's not your job or you'll be in trouble. <laughs> okay, lovely. Good. We can also talk some collocations here, right? Um, maybe I should just make that clear. Collocations are everywhere. Collocations, of course, are just two words or three words that usually go together. So campaign, we normally say advertising with ING, an advertising campaign. Can you say that? An advertising campaign. Good. Feel the rhythm. An advertising campaign. Yeah, the, the stress is so important, right? An advertising campaign. To target, like the picture shows you, is who you want to buy the product. Do you want children to buy? Do you want women to buy? Do you want prod uh, uh, adults to buy? So you can target to target children. Thank you, autocorrect. You can target adults. You can target men. You can target um, middle-aged men like me. You can target very narrowly or very widely, right? So to target somebody, or to target a, a particular market or sector of the market, we say to target somebody. And we do talk about, so if you're targeting middle-aged men, then the middle-aged men are your target audience, right? Who is your target audience? So target audience are the people you want to buy. Well, the people you want to reach and the people you want to buy your product. Uh, the best way to put it, I think, is the people you want to reach and sell to. So we've got target somebody and target audience. Target audience is interesting because I remember as a teenager growing up watching TV and we used to have, in England, we had um, 
advertisements selling washing powder, right? And it was the classic before and after advertisement. So you'd have the lady with the dirty clothes, the young boy, her son, playing football, coming home, covered in dirt. And she'd say, oh, and here's the dirty shirt. And she'd have this washing powder and it would clean and come out really clean and say before and after. And I thought, that's the, the most ridiculous, stupidest advert I've ever seen. I mean, I'm not going to buy that. That doesn't make sense. And my mum said, Keith, the reason is you are not the target audience. They're targeting mothers with lots of dirty laundry. Oh, and then I thought, that's why so many adverts are different. So when you hate an advert, it's probably because you're not the target audience rather than it being a bad advert. It's all about target audience, right? Interesting. I'm sure some of you out there work in marketing. You can give us your insights as well. <laughs> Anshu, welcome. Nice to see you here. Pradeep says, perfume advertisements, it's targeted on young people. Perfume advertisements, yes, are targeted. Good, because it's plural, right? They're targeted at, oh, targeted at. Great, Pradeep, thank you so much. I've just realized that's really, really useful. That will help everybody, right? So we target somebody or the advert is targeted at young people. It's true, right? I think so, because all of these beautiful, handsome models in most of these uh, perfume ads, they're about 16 years old, 18 years old. So they're targeted at young people. Everybody say thank you to Pradeep for teaching us target at. Love it. <laughs> nice. What else have we got? Parisa, this is also true. Restaurant adverts are targeting binge eaters, right? Lovely. That's great. Because you're using the verb are targeting, no preposition, they are targeting binge eaters. Yes, and that's me. Definitely me. <laughs> uh, great. This is interesting. Uh, Guillaume, you've given many yes, useful lessons. What are your target students? My target students are adults between um, 18 and 45 preparing for the IELTS test. That's it. That's my avatar. That's my target audience. Now, interestingly, I do get a lot of students older than that, 50, 60, 70, even 80, I have some students who are not preparing for IELTS, but they just enjoy the class, learn English, and it's great. But if you ask me my target audience, then I'm targeting 18 to 45 year olds preparing for IELTS all across the world. <laughs> great question. Good. OK. That's nice. Let's have a look. Let me move on slowly. What's next? Ah, this different parts of an advert. OK, so we're going to look at different parts of an advert. So we've been looking at briefly, right, the vocabulary. What I wanted to do after that is go on and look at parts of an advert. So here what I mean is when you see an advert, you've got, can you see the aeroplane? Right. Can you see the writing? Right. There are lots of other parts to an advert okay that's what i want to look at what are the different parts for example right you've got the headline that's one part of an advert now i'm going to connect us up to something um i'm going to shout out to the guys at stream alive because stream alive are still letting me pilot their software it's quite interesting um and on here I'm going to take your answers and put them on the screen here. So my question is, if you give me a moment, 
just a tick. Da, da, da. Here it is. You've already started answering, which is great. Okay, I'm going to go into the website over here. What are the different parts? You've got a choice. Captivating slogan. Attractive visuals. Let me just make this a bit bigger. Clear message. Funny story. A memorable story. Beautiful actors creating a positive image. Let's see what you have, what you think here. Now, you've put lots of ideas up, and I'm going to share those. But let's see if you can choose one of them on the board here. Funny story somebody's got in there. Memorable story. Great. Interesting. Thanks, Paula. Thanks, Bin. Isn't that cool? Your name comes up as well. <laughs> I know you told your friend you're not okay. That's a bit loud, wasn't it? <laughs> Slogan, right? Let's see what we've got. In addition, I'm going to add some of the things that you've put up. So Kurat said, main slogan. And Ahita said, engaging slogan. Pradeep as well said the slogan. Jamara said, positive image. Duong says catchy headline. Uh, quite a lot of you are putting in the numbers as well. If you write it in, then we'll get it in the uh, in the poll. Otherwise, it doesn't come in. But not to worry. Lord of this says create a positive brand. Great. Okay. So it seems from what you're saying, although this is not completely accurate but the attractive visuals seem to be very important and as soon as i say that they drop <laughs> captivating slogan that seems to be important a funny story a lot of you said you like funny stories right the visuals seem important memorable story yes also seems to be important from what you're saying a lot of people have put in number two, number two. So attractive visuals, I think, are important. Okay, clear messages, great. Okay, very, very nice. Listen, we'll come back to this. But slogan, visuals and story all seem to be very important. I'm going to come back there in a moment. So we've got some things I'm going to add. Let's just get clear on the vocabulary. When we talk about visuals, um, visuals are the things that you can see, right? Obviously, they are the pictures, the animation. If you remember over here, the visual was the aeroplane, the cloud, the animation. Those are the visuals. Sometimes they're called creatives. Yeah, in the plural as a noun, like visuals is always in the plural in this context. Creatives as well are always here in the plural. So those are the things you can see, like the pictures. You could say the pictures or the images, right? All of these are really the same kind of thing. Now, the slogan, we often say the advertising slogan because a slogan, a company also has a slogan. Maybe it's not for an advert, but it's just a part of the company's um image so we could say an advertising slogan or a tagline and they're both the same thing right tag line tagline for example nike's tagline is just do it l'oreal has a tagline or a slogan b 
because you're worth it. <laughs> because you're worth it. McDonald's slogan is I'm loving it. OK, different slogans or taglines. And then you've also got something which is the jingle. So the jingle is the the music. It's a very, very short piece of music or sound, right? For example, could be a song, but sound. For example, McDonald's, the jingle is ba -da -ba -ba -ba. That's the jingle, right? So short piece of music or sound that goes with an advert. So I would say these are the main parts. Let's just have a look if there are any that I'm missing that maybe you've put some in. Catchy, I like this, catchy, catchy visuals, right? Catchy slogan. So you can talk about catchy visuals, catchy slogan, captivating slogan, attractive slogan, attractive visuals. All of these are good. Great. Facebook user, I've got my desired band score. I miss your classes. Well, come and thank you so much for coming and joining us, even though you've done your exam. That's great. What else? Captivative and picturesque words. Um, so captiv captivating and picturesque words. Can a word be picturesque? That's interesting. I would say picturesque images but i'm just thinking on a very creative level we could say picturesque words because the words create a picture right so i like that i'm going to keep that on a very creative level poetic license picturesque words because they create a picture um prince points out that there may be a hidden message in the video in the adverts yes very true so there's hidden messages or subconscious messages okay great anything else other parts of this of the advert village says easy easy understanding messages i'm going to help you a little bit here because what we would say is easy to understand messages that would be the way we make an adjective right easy to understand messages Excellent. Good. OK, nice. So we can say catchy advertising slogan, um, engaging advertising slogan, um, ba -ba -ba, visuals. We've got attractive, uh, appealing. Vivid, yeah. Picturesque means vivid, kind of, yes. It means looks like a picture, yes. Attractive, appealing, vivid. All of those are good. Excellent. I'm going to share this with you, actually. Um, this is a website. Let me come back to our website over here. Look, those were the final results we had. End the power poll. And let me take us here. And guys, if uh, Upsara and uh, Paula, who are the moderators for me, could you share the link to the the slogans, right? If you want to find out more, you can check out this website. It's got 21, look at that, adverts, unforgettable advertising slogans. And again, I recommend this because of the language you get things like first impressions, right? First impressions matter. They're so important. Um, make sure you have a catchy slogan that engages your audiences. So this is advice for marketers, but these are, it gives you some great examples, tells you what, what it is, a slogan exact, exactly, talks about the target audience, right? We talked about, um, and it then gives you some examples. So Nike, 
that we looked at. Just do it. And they give you here, you can see the visual, often black and white. And then the slogan, just do it. Um, the slogan is iconic. It's a nice word. It's iconic, which means it's become so famous. It's a symbol everybody recognizes. Um, nice. You've got also L'Oreal. That's one I mentioned because you're worth it. So you've got the visuals. You've got the actors or actresses. These could be the, if they're famous, they're going to be an endorser um, or celebrity. And then you've got the tagline, well, the slogan, because you're worth it. And here there's an extra tagline celebrating 50 years of women's worth. Nice, right? Um, so there's some nice language. I won't go through all of these. You can go and have a look yourself. Betcha can't eat just one. Lay's, I love Lay's crisps. <laughs> I love this slogan, is a dare. The chips are deliciously addicting. The brand as active and engaging. Active brand, engaging brand. So nice language you can pick up. Burger King. This is a look at that. This is an old advert. Wow, that's going back a little bit. Have it your way. It's the only way. That's the slogan, right? So you can go and have a look in your own time and check out these different slogans and have a look at the language, some really nice, useful language and some interesting, some of the older uh, adverts as well. OK, it's American based, but a lot of those, I think, are international brands that you can be familiar with. So worth checking out. So we've looked at the language and describing adverts, some of the adjectives. But let's have a look then. I want to ask this question to you is how would you describe these adverts? So I'm going to show you some adverts and I want to know how you would describe them. You can put some words um, in the chat. I'll do. There are different numbers. So when you put your word, just put the number and then what you would say. So, for example, right, if I show you the first advert, the one, I, the first one I'd like to show you is this one. It's from McDonald's. How would you describe these adverts in the chat then? Just put the number because you could see it's number one, right? And maybe appealing and interesting visual. Maybe something like that. OK, so just put the number and then the adjective or a little phrase to describe it. Let's have a look at these. I'll do them slowly one by one. Here's the first one for your chicken McNuggets. <laughs> and let's go Caribbean. And I'll share a few. <laughs> Fairishty. Confusing. Great. Nice. Interesting, Parisa. Yeah. Disturbing. Let's get children on junk food, shall we? As Remo says, junk food. Well, GSP, yummy. <laughs> nice, Xiaomara. Majo, very good. Like it. Colourful, absolutely. Meecha Wong, and I guess that's the point of the advert, right? Is to make the food so tempting. Great. Attractive, Steve. Nice to see you again. Ali, love that. Catchy and intuitive. Like it. Izam, very good point about the colours. The colours work so well, right? The yellow. Apparently, yellow makes you very open, relaxed, um, but it's also the colour of the food. <laughs> Most junk food is yellow. 
Luscious, good. Delicious, great. Ruslan, like it, very nice. Noza, you bring out a good point because this is, they're using the endorsement, right, of the, the Minions and the Minion film. So absolutely, they're connecting to, well, their target audience. Clearly, children love the Minions. Nice point, right? Overwhelming with yellow. RTM, good expression. Kid friendly. Like it. Excellent. Like it. Very, very good. We've got loads there. So that's the first one. Uh, let's move on away from the Minion Madness. What about number two? Have a look at this one. Number two. Look carefully at the visual. And then the writing, the headline is wrinkled, wonderful. Which one is it? Do you see the woman as wrinkled or wonderful? And then it says, will society ever accept old, inverted commas, can be beautiful? Join the beauty debates. And they've got this campaign, advertising campaign for realbeauty.co.uk. It's Dove. And if you know Dove, or if you don't know Dove, they make soap. Great, let's go country. Vigorous, interesting. Okay, wonderful, nice. Presentable, Emil, that's interesting, presentable. Shamil, ambiguous, because of the wrinkled and the wonderful, maybe? Yeah, a lot of people like this. Wonderful, wonderful. Oh, I see. You're not saying the adverts wonderful. You're ticking the wonderful. <laughs> right. Got you. Steve, humorous. There is an element of humor here. A little bit. Yes. Okay, natural beauty. Great. What about the advert? Think about the advert. How would you describe the advert? Yeah, mean, great. Very thought-provoking with that rhetorical question. Exactly. It's a thought-provoking advert. Love that. Yes. Harissa says effective, right? It gets you engaged, right? Not only with the soap, but with the debate. Lord of this is again, simplicity is beauty. Nice. Nazra, do you care for comments? Yes, I do. Please. Nam, this is good. It triggers people to give their opinions. Very, very nice. Excellent. Love it. Very, very good. So that was the second one. The last one is a bit of an old... Oh, I won't tell you. I'm not describing it. You describe it. Describe the advert. Number three. What should we go? Let's go jazz. Anonymous Greg. Classic vintage, right? Yes. And uh, Pizza Gabriel also. Vintage or retro. That's another good word. Vintage and retro is good. Naomi. Intriguing. Yes. Nice. Wynn says ancient. Retro, right, means it's kind of the 1970s, 1980s. It's quite old fashioned. Ancient means really, really old. I think if you're using the word here in a humorous way, then yes, you can say ancient. Um, but of course, ancient is like 2000 years old. So you're being idiomatic here. So retro, vintage, I like. This is a great comment, misleading, right? I mean, in, in the 2000s, you would never be able to do this. But back in the day, these cigarettes are just what the doctor ordered because there's a filter in the cigarette. Cigarettes never used to have a filter. Sam, tongue in cheek, I think, I hope classic also Ali interesting bandwagoning right 
everybody's smoking jump on the bang wagon bang wagon nice it could be captivating especially with the you know the beautiful woman the situation abdullah amazing maria hilarious well yes right nowadays we think this is funny but back in the day this was a serious advert interesting nostalgic yet yeah, sexy as well absolutely they're clearly using uh, the power of sex not sex what's the word sexuality or sensuality to sell here and very good comment awful advert trying to catch women yes absolutely contrasting colors paula good point right very good point the yellow the blue the black the red very very interesting and outdated nice brilliant really good comments so we've gone through three different kinds of adverts there right and some very interesting language let's just pull up some of those words that you mentioned and i'll add them here so we've got three different kinds of adverts we talked about the last one old-fashioned so i liked what some people said retro vintage right that kind of means you know 50 60 years ago or maybe 100 years ago um somebody said ancient and i think if you're tongue in cheek right so tongue in cheek it's a bit of difficult expression but it just means you're not serious right you're joking so it's not it's clearly not ancient because that's a thousand years ago but if you're tongue in cheek if you're being tongue in cheek you could say ancient i don't need capital letters here do we dated you could say outdated but in fact in in spoken natural english you can also just say quite effectively oh it's dated that advert is dated right it it it's no longer relevant so we had some nice um words there outdated dated old fashioned so vivid means the color a very lively colors so you could talk about lively colors um we had a few comments about colors let's see what did we have oh a lot hilarious retro design captivating captivating colors okay um you could talk about the advert as being memorable so for example the the, the one with the smoking for me is quite memorable because it's so shocking <laughs> so here right shocking is it's surprising and how can they say cigarettes are healthy just what the doctor do ordered so because it's so old it's shocking controversial which means it doesn't follow the mainstream thought right so you could say not mainstream which means quite unusual right unusual so that advert today would be very unusual in fact it would probably be forbidden <laughs> today shocking controversial um misleading was one we had that was great misleading shocking controversial not mainstream misleading misleading adverts is a is a very common collocation because they're not telling the truth somebody a few of you said it jumps on the bandwagon it jumps on the bandwagon i'm not sure if that's hyphenated let's do a quick check is bandwagon hyphenated sometimes right in english it's so complicated some words are one word some words are two words bandwagon is one word mm, okay bandwagon is one word take the hyphen out it jumps on the bandwagon which means it just follows the fashion right 
but in a negative way. So when you say something jumps on the bandwagon, it's a very negative thing. It's following the fashion. It's following like sheep. It's a bit of a negative thing to say, right? Jumping on the bandwagon. Okay, good. I'm just seeing any other words that came up that were useful. We had humorous. And I'm going to add that there, yeah. Humorous. Um, hilarious. Somebody said very funny, right? Funny. Okay. So lots of different ways we can describe adverts, right? We're looking here at how would you describe these adverts? Retro, vintage, old-fashioned, outdated, dated, vivid. Remember to get the v, v, vivid, vivid, lively, captivating, memorable, shocking, controversial, controver, Versal, controversial, not mainstream, misleading, humorous, hilarious, funny. It jumps on the bandwagon. Excellent. Good. Lots of nice language to describe adverts. So what's coming up next? Um, what's coming up next? I have to check out parts of an advert. What's next? What makes a good advert? Is it, what makes a good advert? Is it the endorser? Is it the colours? Is it the story? We've kind of talked about this a little bit, but again, I'm going to go back to my friends at Stream Alive and see if I can connect us to this question. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Catchy, right? <laughs> Uh, and here's mine, not quite as catchy. Badab shibi dooby 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 bum bum bum. That's my jingle. Um, great. Okay. So, no, I'm in the wrong place. Okay. No, forget that. We're in the wrong place completely. Here's the question. What makes a good advert? Sorry. Come on, Keith. Pull yourself together. What makes a good advert? Symbols. Great. Good. Hi. Catchy slogans. Brilliant. I think we've kind of been here before, but let's just review quickly. Good idea and content. Lady Blue, thank you so much. <laughs> Isam, very important. Great, Julia. Eye-catching. Sarah. Now, Sarah, are you tongue-in-cheek? Or are you just being realistic that actually nowadays most companies are using slim models? Unfortunately, disaster. A clear meaning that is easily perceivable by the audience. Lovely language. Yes, The animation, okay. Shamil, great point. Unique idea. Jazz, I love this point about the famous heroine because if you've got a good story, having a key character, normally, right, there's the hero and the heroine. In the Facebook group the other day, I shared um, a video. It was one of the Super Bowl ads and it talked about how they create the best advert ever and having the hero the character being a hero that you can identify with really helps in an advert. Great. Lichen talks about the songs, right? Beautiful songs. Um, Duong, be truthful, competitive and professional. I love that. What good advice, right? Be truthful. Because let's face it, many adverts stretch the truth can I write that down? That's a great expression. Don't stretch the truth. To, to stretch the truth, right, is to, to lie. 
basically. But instead of, it's euphemistic, instead of saying to lie, which is a bit strong, we say, well, it stretches the truth, right? It exaggerates. Let me put that. I love that. To stretch the truth is to exaggerate. I can, I've got so lazy. I just re rely on autocorrect for everything. To exaggerate, which is often the case in adverts, right? Stunning images. Linda again talks about the good music. Um, Rowena, family orientated. Well, it depends on the target audience, right? But I, I understand what you're saying. Structure, very important, especially for a story. Message and clarity of message. Uh, Nilu, impressive pictures. Great. And here is an interesting one from Nishadi, right? They're having the celebratory, blah, 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 celebrity engagement, right? Celebrity endorsement. I'm going to call that celeb. Okay, let me go back. Ba -ba. Celebrity. Can I call that endorsement rather than engagement? The reason I say that is because engagement is that you want other celebrities to engage and watch. But endorsement is a celebrity says, this is a good product. So celebrity endorsement uh, is going to be key. It's got an E, of course it's got an E. So celebrity endorsement will be um, a key thing to have for many adverts, especially like Nike or Nike. They have a lot of celebrity endorsement. Good animation, right? Okay. So let me write some of these down. Good animation. I'm trying to get the same thing. Um, oh, I like this. Min. It cuts to the chase. Get straight to the point. Thank you. I like that. Can I add that in here? It cuts to the chase. Uh, equals it gets to the point. Um, clarity of message, I think, is a similar thing, right? Clarity of message. Clear target audience. Yeah, good. Clear target audience. And we've got more that I'm going to bring up here that I put in before. We talked about captivating slogan, attractive visuals or animation, right target audience, clear target audience. Um, good storytelling, having an attractive hero or heroine, in the story having tension and relatability, so tension in the story. This is, again, going back to the importance of the story, but the tension in the story makes you engaged. If two people are arguing, why are they arguing? You want resolution. Relatability means you can relate to it or you can identify with it. It means hmm, it's basically that means it's relevant to your life. OK, so. You can say, well, for adverts, relatability is important. So I need to be able to relate to it or identify with it. So it's relevant to me. Do you remember, for example, when I talked about earlier on, excuse me, earlier on, I talked about the advertisement. Go away, my dear endorser. Go away. I talked about the advertisement with washing powder for the clothes, right? Now, I could not relate to that. I couldn't identify with the mother because I wasn't the target audience. So it wasn't relevant. It wasn't relatable. However, if there's an, uh, an advert for teachers online with a really good software that makes life easy, oh, suddenly that's relatable. 
I can identify with the advert or maybe the hero in the story. And so it's relevant, right? So those words are interesting, right? Relatability, relate to it, identify with it, different preposition, and relevant. They're all connected, basically. Nice. What else have we got? Um, somebody had colourful here. Colourful or attractive visuals or animations. Great. We've got memorable story. It catches your eye. So here there are two expressions that I like. One is it catches your eye. <laughs> Idiomatic. And the other is it grabs, it takes your attention. So these are both idiomatic, nice expressions. Talked about empathy and trust, builds empathy and trust. Um, and it creates a positive impression of the brand. Creates a positive impression of the brand. Conveys a clear message. That is about clarity, right? We talked about clarity of message conveys a clear message, cuts to the chase. And the last thing I'll mention is in a saturated market, all of these above are important. So a saturated market is where a market that is full. There are so many adverts, right? Nowadays, when you go on social media, when you go on Facebook or YouTube, there are adverts left, right and centre all over the place. It's a saturated market. There are too many people advertising. And for example, the market of, well, software, right? There are so many software companies, that market is saturated. And so if the market is saturated or busy, all of these are important. Catchy slogan, colourful visuals, uh, clarity of message. It grabs your attention. All of them are important. Right. Excellent. Good. So, wow, some great ideas and some really, really nice um, comments from all of you. Some really good language. Do remember, right, all of this language over here. It's hard to work in a mirror. Um all the language over here ba -bum, goes into a PDF and gets put on my website at the end of the class. If you don't know and if you're new, it is the Keith Speaking Academy. Um, all of this will go onto the website to the free live lessons area for you to download. That's later. But we still have work to do. We still have fun to have because we're not done yet. <laughs> What's next after that? We're going to create a slogan. I'm going to invite you to come along. Can I have a drink? Mm. I love your conversations going on with each other. It's great. I want us to think about Keith Speaking Academy. <laughs> Ta -da. So Keith Speaking Academy, right? I'll show you the website. But what I want us to do is I don't have a great slogan at the moment, in my humble opinion. Um, and I, I can tell you why it's not great, because I don't think any of you know the slogan. If I asked you what's my slogan, was any, does anybody know? I bet you don't. Um, so I want you together with me right now today to create a new slogan. And then I'm going to try and um, use it. OK, slogan and motto. Yeah, a slogan is more for, for business, right? And advertising. A motto can be personal, right? Your personal motto is something you believe. It's like a belief. Um, so, for example, Growing up, my mother always said, if you want something done, do it yourself. Now, that was a motto for her. It was a belief. Um, 
But a slogan is something for a company or for a advertisement, right? It's a slightly different. Okay, so <laughs> let me show you very briefly the website and I'll, I'll and then we'll do this together. It'll just take a minute or two. If you go to my website, right, this is what you see, I think. So this is the Keith Speaking Academy and it says prepare for your IELTS speaking test the easy way, the fun way, and the professional way, right? That is kind of my slogan, the fun and professional way. Um, so it's the kind of slogan that we've got. Let's make a different slogan. Now, what I'm going to do, pop up advertisements. How annoying. <laughs> How annoying having pop up advertisements. Um, we're going to work from a different um, website. I'm going to invite Paula and Apsara, if you could share this link, right? It's the Lino It link. And on this link, um, guys, I want you to work with me to post your ideas for a new slogan. Um, knowing what you know about me, I don't know if you know much about me, um, but this is what it looks like, okay? When you come in here, here we go, I'll make it a bit smaller. Can I move this across? Oh, come on. Oh, come on, let me move you. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Oh, the word annoying. You should be able to move these, and I think I can. <laughs> oh, come on. Seriously? <gasps> no. No, I don't want to sign up. I'm already signed up. You don't need to sign up. Here we go. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. There we go. Gotcha. Okay. So you can go to the link, right? And all you need to do is click on a piece of paper and write down a slogan, right? So for example, if you think it's easy, the e uh, English, the easy way, if that's your slogan for me, Key Speaking Academy, you put it up and that's it. Simple. Here we go, from English student to English speaker. Love it. Take a breath, study with Keith. Excellent, okay? Get on the link and share a slogan for the Keith Speaking Academy. And let's see if we can find a really nice one that we can then later share with others. Okay, I'll leave you a minute with a bit of... Sorry, a bit of hip hop. Um, whilst I just make sure that I can move these because I should be able to move them. Yes, I can. No, I can. Why couldn't I move them before? Okay. So... Some of you, if you can't put it there, don't worry, you can put it here. Making a nice cup of tea. Where is Keith? Your English can breathe. Where Keith is, your English can breathe. Nice. Have fun and learn. Okay, very, very interesting. Nice. Let's have a look what we've got. Let's study English. No matter where you are, learn English 24-7 better English for your better life. English become easy. English language is trusted and reliable. Together we stand like it. English is a source of communication. Right. Not bad. Not bad. So slogans are very difficult to write, right? When you write a slogan, Take that down a bit. When you write a slogan, sometimes you want an imperative, right? Telling people, do this. Learn English and have fun, for example. Um, it's an imperative. Sometimes it's a description. English the easy way. And normally it's not a full sentence. It's just a phrase or a chunk, right? Just do it. Sometimes the smallest chunks are really effective. Um, so simplicity is important. 
clarity are important but also what's the message what are you actually saying when you say that so here one here's one enjoy learning english with keith it's clear right it's enjoy and telling you what to do need to improve your speaking speaking go with keith right question answer that's a common format as well for um for slogans english forever not bad it's clear simple connect to english with keith's academy i like that because you're emphasizing you're connecting but it's clear it's the keith academy life is short i'm not sure about that <laughs> it's not clear it's not clear about english is it play english with keith is nice although that could be for children but still nice mastering english with keith and achieve your dreams your dreams in a little bit <laughs> i think you mean in a short time right but still very very nice very very good speak english fluently like your mother tongue oh i'm not sure that might be misleading or maybe stretching the truth i'm not sure i can guarantee that <laughs> learn while enjoying an english tea that is nice because it's quite picturesque words right you've got a clear image study today wealthy tomorrow that's nice but it does sound like i'm giving financial training i'm not sure that's true <laughs> speak like gerard and owen interesting again there's the football connection right but it is english do not be sluggish breathe learn english with keith right these are great really really great nice i like it we've got others that you've got here band nine in speaking with english academy english is like a piece of cake if you follow keith's strategy speak english with keith right brilliant good okay guys some really really nice slogans i am not going to choose now i'm going to go back later and check that out because it looks really interesting and see if i can find some inspiration very 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 nice great let me move on we're going to have a look at some idioms next okay because we've looked at creating a slogan um idioms to have it down to a t what does that mean let's find out okay to have it down to a t means after much practice you can do it perfectly or be able to do it perfectly for example i have played this song hundreds of times on the piano now i have it down to a t i can play it perfectly i can do it perfectly talking about adverts apple have their advertising slogans down to a t right what what were the apple slogans things like be different or do it differently they've done so many slogans they now have it down to a t they do it perfectly okay great go viral to spread quickly and widely this is idiomatic because of course a viral is is talking about a virus right that can spread from pe person to person here we're being idiom idiomatic talking about adverts um for example china airlines latest advert mind you this was like 2 years ago went viral across the world it was really interesting you can google it and find out china airlines latest advert went viral so adverts can go viral sometimes to splash out so to splash out is to spend a lot of money on something so maybe you want to splash out on food or you like to splash out on going to the cinema splash out on tea 
But in the context of adverts, we could say big companies like Coca-Cola always splash out on advertising, right? They do. They spend a huge amount of money on advertising, brand awareness advertising. So they splash out on advertising. So notice two prepositions, right? Splash out on, because the on describes the thing that you're buying, right? To spend money on food, on advertising. But it looks like you've got two prepositions. Okay, an expression again, which is, it can be used generally, but we can use it about advertising to stand out from the crowd is, again, to be so much better that everybody notices you. For example, Apple's latest advert for the iPhone 13 stood out from the crowd. In fact, I think it was Apple's, one of the first advertising campaigns they did in the 1980s stood out from the crowd. It was so good, it's everybody noticed it, right? Um, let's see, to harp on about something. <laughs> so to harp on about something is to talk repeatedly about something, but in an annoying way, in an irritating, horrible way. So you talk and talk and talk about it. Sometimes politicians harp on about how good they are. They harp on about how they're saving the country. These adverts always harp on about how good the product is, but then they never keep their promises, right? So some adverts are misleading because they harp on about all these features and benefits, but then they're not true sometimes, right? Okay, good. What else have we got? <laughs> Dang, and my English level stands out from the crowd in my class. Nice, very, very nice. When I was stressed, I splashed out on unnecessary products. Paula, we all do that, right? Comfort buying. Some people do comfort eating. Others do comfort buying, right? Um, splash out on unnecessary products when I was stressed. Saba, nice. Uh, clothes and shoe companies. Yes, I think not cloth companies, but clothes companies splash out on their adverts to capture their target audience. Very nice. Yes. Okay, good. Anything else? Parisa, yes, this is good. And also it gives me a good opportunity because you've got this lovely expression, it is worth it. Oh, it is worth it to splash out on advertising. That's good. I'm just going to put a comma because I, I misread it, but that's great. It's worth it to splash out on advertising, especially if it is for a brand new company. Yeah, brand awareness is so important. Hui, spend fortune, splash out. Yes, yes. Dang, and your video is going to go viral for sure. <laughs> Don't hold your breath, my friend. <laughs> Great, lovely. Our Sada, my friend loves to splash out on the brand name bags every week. I bet she's well off. I think she must be. She must be well off. My friend loves to splash out. Great practice. Good. Um, this is a nice one. Great, Nguyen. A nice example here. He harped on about how rich he is, but he didn't split the bill. <laughs> what? He let you pay the bill. Lovely example. Whether it's true or not is a nice example. Very, very good. I've got a final idiom for you, guys. Harp on about to coin a phrase. So to coin a phrase um, or a tagline or to coin a slogan is to create a phrase. For example, it's not easy coining a catchy tagline or slogan, 
as you've seen, I mean, all of you have been able to coin really nice slogans, but it's not easy to coin a catchy tagline. Okay, to coin a phrase. It's interesting, right? I mean, in English, we have, click, we have a lot of nouns that become verbs, right? I mean, a coin, okay? This is a coin, right? You, it's, it's a piece of money, if that's an expression. It's money. And a coin, when it becomes a verb, to coin a phrase means to create a phrase. The Queen. A big shout out to the Queen, by the way. Your Majesty. <laughs> shout out to your Jubilee. 70 years as the Queen of, of um, Great Britain, United Kingdom, whatever. Lovely. Well done, Elizabeth. Big shout out to the Queen. Nice. So that's it. Idioms. There you go. Loads of them there. Human, I can coin an idiom. You can probably. Yes, you can create an idiom. Create your own idioms. Be creative. Why not? What we're going to do next is move away from the idioms. I'm going at kind of quite fast speed because of the time. And we're going to start doing this funny thing over here. <laughs> One of my favorite games. Listen, we're going to play Kahoot, right? And this is a way for us to check if you've been sleeping on the job. Have you been asleep or have you been paying attention? And let's see who is the best. If you're new, this is a game we're going to play and we're going to review the language that we have studied today. It's very easy to play. All you need to do is go to this website, right? Kahoot.it. And there you can put in your name and the code. So, all right, Keith, get the things set up. I need to set up Kahoot. Give me a moment. Kahoot. And then I'll get the code for you. And it takes about five or ten minutes. We can play. You can play. You can all play. You need to keep watching me. And then in another tab or on another device, you go to Kahoot. And there you can choose and give your answer. Um, but you need to see this screen to listen to me. <laughs> listen to me. Um, I've got four questions. It's multiple choice, right? You choose one, two, three, or four, A, B, C, or D, whichever you think is the right answer. You have about 30 seconds to answer, and that's the way it works. Good. Great. Apsara, Paula, thanks for sharing those links. So let me show you on the screen, and then you can see how this is going to pan out. Let me just move that, okay? So there's your code or PIN, the PIN for this game is 114-3059. 114-3059. And I'll give you a, a minute or two to sign in, and then we can start playing. Nerd Guy says, I drifted off to sleep. Oh dear, you're not going to do well. Arthur says, nowadays our media is nothing more than to coin a phrase. Misrepresentation of actual facts. Azra, that is true. And I think it's going to get worse, I'm afraid. Duang, bonjour. Nice to see you. Ça va? So we've got people coming in. Great. Got about 74. I'll give you a minute or so for those who want to join. If you can't join, don't worry. You can still put your answer in the chat for the uh, video. Bum, 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 bum. Catchy jingle, right? Is it a jingle? No, it's a long piece of music. Background music, elevator music. <clears throat> Good. I think we've got just about everybody in. Hello has joined. 
Nilu, Said, Great Atwa, welcome. Layla, Hash. See if I can get up to 100 and then we'll start. Naomi, you're leaving. Understood. You're working while watching your video. Oh dear, don't get in trouble. Thank you so much for watching. Vladimir, you've just arrived. Oh dear, we're almost finishing. <laughs> it's time to kick off. It is indeed. Let's go. We've got 102 people. Let's start, okay? Work, but target audience. Those of you who said circled, be careful with my pictures. They may be deliberately misleading you. <laughs> so who's at the top? Vofka, Priyanki, Art, Tam and Duong. Excellent. Question number two. A market that is already full is called a blank market. Fill up, damp, wet, saturated. Pradeep says he was in 25th position. Dum, sounds like James Bond music. Anonymous Green, well done. Dong, well done. Good answers in the chat. Oh, Sunny, be careful. Maria, well done again. Madhu Sunny, well done. The answer was saturated. The vast majority got that right, although a few people had damp and fill up. Um, yeah, absolutely not. Although damp and wet and saturated have similar meanings in this collocation, only saturated market works. Let's move on. We've got Duong has moved up to first place. Art is in second and Tam in third. Question number three. I hate sexist adverts. I can't be blank with them. Oh, Doing, having, making, getting. This is difficult because I skipped this <laughs> in the lesson. Oh dear. So I won't be surprised if many of you don't get this. This is a tough one. Ah, right. Okay. I'm not surprised a lot of you went with getting. The expression is, I can't be doing with them, which means I hate them or I don't like them. I do apologise because that actually, <laughs> um, it was a part of the lesson that I skipped. I had some templates for liking and disliking, but I skipped it because of time. Don't worry, it's in the PDF, but that's why... You didn't get that. So I can't be doing with it means I don't like it. It annoys me. OK, don't worry. That was a tough one. Let's move on. Duang is still at the top. Shizuka second, 2KJ third. Great. EMI has the highest streak. It's the last question. Companies like Apple always blank out on advertising. Swim, splash, dip, rain. Have you noticed I'm an Apple fan? <laughs> Dang and an great example. Can't be doing with gossips. Great. Can't be doing with it. Oh, this is a tricky one as well. Interesting answers. But yes, the overwhelming majority got splash, which is correct to splash out on, to spend lots of money on. Well, maybe you've hacked Kahoot. Who knows? <laughs> uh, great. Live, l l l lovely. Listen, lovely. Lively. No, listen, lovely. Listen, that's great. Well done, all of you who've done so well with that and uh, remembering all the language that we've covered today. Today, then, we've been looking at adverts, right? We've done a lot of stuff. We have looked at the vocabulary of adverts, describing different parts of an advert. Do you remember? Visuals, creatives, Logan, 
slogans, etc. Um, we've looked at what makes a good advert with catchy slogans, attractive visuals, it grabs your attention and so on. We've created a slogan and I am going to go back later and look at not that it's not there. I'm going to look at the board. Wow, I just I can just see it now. It's just covered in slogans. And I think I'm going to try and choose a new one. So thank you for all of your wonderful suggestions. We've looked at a bunch of idioms like to do something perfectly after practice, to have it down to a T. And you've shown me that you are awake whilst we play Kahoot. I'm so pleased about that. <laughs> So listen, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, we're going to wind up. It's been a pleasure as always being here. Just to let you know, next live lesson will be the first Thursday of the month. So that's the 7th of July, Spain time. OK, do remember if you've enjoyed the lesson and you want more, then check out my online course, IELTS Speaking Success get a band 7 plus and the gold version the prices are rising a little at midnight tonight so if you're thinking about it don't think anymore go ahead and it will really help you not only prepare for IELTS but just up your speaking all the way okay so if you want to beat the price rise get it cheaper Today is a good day to do that. That's the online course, right? It's the IELTS Speaking Success, Get a Band 7, and also the gold, which has the extra videos, extra practice. It has the live lessons twice a month. Um, you can get all the information from my website. And the courses have just been updated with new videos as well, new topics um, to help you study even more. So thank you for joining. Do remember, if you want to... Um, Go and get the, go and get the, the what? Go and get the PDF, today's notes. Um, go onto the website, Keith Speaking Academy, and just go to the free live lessons. And when you click on there, you'll find, not now, but in about two or three hours, the latest live lesson. You can get the PDF, click it on here. Um, that food was the last one, which was very popular. And you can get all the others. They're down here, right? All of the old lessons that we've done, the previous lessons. If you're interested in the course, click on Own Online Courses, and that will take you to the courses I've got. You can check out the Gold course, the Band 7 course, Eli's Writing course is there as well. They're all there. And do remember, next week, we'll be launching with Fiona, I will be launching Fiona's reading course. So there's going to be an IELTS reading course and it is great. It will be on my website next week. So keep an eye open on YouTube and Facebook. My emails, I'll let you know more about it. In the meantime, Shishi Daja, muchas gracias. Merci beaucoup. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, do take care. Keep studying. If you've got your test coming in these days, I wish you the very, very best of luck, right? Fingers crossed. Touch wood. I hope it goes really well. Break a leg, as we say in England. Break a leg doesn't mean break a leg. It means good luck. I'm sure it'll go great. Keep practicing and you will become a confident English speaker. Bye bye, everybody. Take care. All the best. Let me leave you with some some pop music.
Take care. Bye-bye.